Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Alex, the Comic Recorder. Thank you so much for clicking play on this video. I have a very, very small haul for you guys, but this could be one of the biggest scores and the biggest finds I have ever made in comic book collecting. Hopefully you guys are excited. Here we go. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to the Short Boxed app. They're the sponsor of this channel. And I picked out three books, which are really incredible, that are currently on the app right now. And they're under the horror section. The first book is this 3.5 Startling Tales, number 11 from Star Publications from 1952. It's a beautiful LB Cole cover. The second book up is the very, very famous cover from Johnny Craig. It's Crime Suspense Stories, number 22 from 1954. This was definitely used in the seduction of the innocent. And lastly, you have this really great 4.0 Ghost Comics from Fiction House from winter of 1953. This is a Maurice Whitman cover. This title is awesome and it's definitely one that's a little bit more affordable and really worth the pickup. So once again, a huge thanks and shout out to Shortbox. Make sure that you're checking the link in the description below to download that app today. All right, you guys, I've got a really small but really awesome pre-code horror haul. It's one of the best hauls I've ever had in my life, definitely. But there's a huge disclaimer. I'm not a pre-code horror collector. This is... I've had pre-code horror before, you know, a few EC books and a few random books here and there, but I've never gotten anything of this magnitude. So if you want an expert on pre-code horror, I definitely suggest people like DS Comics, Dope Comics, um, Lee Polanski. Um, there's a couple other guys. Anna Love is really big into horror comics. Check those guys out on Instagram. Those are the few that come to mind. If I if I think of any more, I'll put them in the description below. They will be more, much, much more of experts. I'm gonna give you as much information as I possibly can uh, based on the resources that I have available to me. But I just knew you need to know enough to know what you're looking at when you're when you're out hunting. So hopefully this will help you guys if you're out hunting and you come across something stupid crazy like I was able to. So long story short, I was in a small town and I always, always, always check. So this is a pro tip for you guys who are out hunting for comic books. If you're in small towns, uh, stop by obviously comic shops, antique malls. Those are pretty obvious ones, but stop by used game shops. Not not talking about like GameStop, but like if there's a used, you know, independent retailer game shop in town, baseball card shop dealer, any collectible shops. Heck, even sometimes like RC cars, you know, if they build RC cars or something like that. Who knows? It's a hobby. And then um, last but not least, record stores. And I've had super great success in my territory um, in Illinois and Missouri of stopping in record stores. So a couple months ago, I was in a record store and the owner said, we're clearing out our warehouse and we're going to be un, you know, uncovering and probably sending to auction a humongous EC, like one owner collection. Originally, this the shop sold uh, magazines and comic books and whatnot, and they sold EC comics and other kind of comic books back in the day. And they sold this 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 guy in town all of these comics originally and then he sold them back to this retailer, this record store. And so I was very very lucky to be the first person. I'm going to put some footage here of what I was seeing and it was just it, it was crazy. I'll try to clip out like the big books that I found, but the first book that I saw was just insane so i'm going to go ahead and show the first book it was the owner picked up a shoe box put it on the counter opened the lid and i about lost it i had to play cool because i didn't know what the prices were and but he did have the prices set so the first book that was on top and i'll go ahead and show it it is arguably like one of the number one if not the number one pre-code horror comic book um on several lists. Simple Man's Comics had it at the top of his list in the collaboration with CBSI a few years ago and I talked to him about that list and so the first book that I you know I knew I had to walk out of that shop with was Black Cat number 50 this is from June of 1954 so it's Black Cat Mystery number 50 and it's a famous famous Lee Elias cover and it's just, it's one of those ones where there's a few other comics that look very similar where there's, um, you know, a face is melting or faces being blown up and stuff like that. But this is arguably one of the most famous um, pre-code horror books out there. Definitely top 10 for sure. So this is Lee Elias from 1954. And the thing about this is it really looks great. It looks awesome in this Mylar, but 
I will tell you that there's tape from the top of the spine to the bottom of the spine and then there's probably another piece of tape like holding it here and holding it there as you can see it goes kind of across the 50 there and um, you can see some white or I don't think that's page coming through it's just like it kind of chipped off but anyways I think based on you know I knew this when I was in the shop when I opened up the cover and kind of looked very closely they put they made sure that the cover was very close to the inner um, inner part of the book but I think that the covers most likely detached I couldn't quite tell um, looking at it from the outside because the tape is kind of masking what's going on underneath it but I'm 99% sure that the cover is detached I'd probably get like a 1.0 uh, at this at this grade but it looks great back cover also looks really really nice too I'm probably not gonna you know handle these books at this time but maybe at another time or on Instagram I'll show uh, the books and maybe some of the interiors but this is amazing and I will tell you I'll just go ahead and tell you guys I paid eight hundred dollars for this book um, and there was no negotiation that was the price that he asked for it so this book was eight hundred dollars and I was pretty happy to pay for that book um, I'll get some census numbers for for you guys right now So according to Go Collect, you know they do use the CGC census, and they have it up there. Uh, sometimes it's just not quite up to date, you know, especially when a book is constantly getting more and more graded. But there's a total of 99 um, total total graded 99 uh, copies, and then 89 blue labels. The highest graded is a 9.8. Could you imagine having a 9.8 of this book? It would be insane. And at about a 1.0, there's about six of them on here. Uh, recent sales on this book, the the last sale on Black Cat Mystery number 50, according to Go Collect, was December of 2020, and it was for a 3.5 for about $6,500. So this is a very very expensive book. Um, in that lower grade, it's going to be anywhere from 5,000 to 6,500. You know, 3.5, five O's um, in 2020. In October of 2020 sold for $8,000 so this is gonna be you know probably in that $2,000 range for this copy right here all right in that same shoe box uh, probably about four from the bottom in that box was this amazing chamber of chills number 19 once again arguably like one of the top 10 pre-code horror books out there ever to be published this one did not have tape on the spine it is attached at both staples there is one piece of tape down here and you can kind of see the glare right there and there's no piece of tape at the top or anything like that but this is just a beautiful Lee Elias cover it's a Harvey publications from September of 1953 and the misfits kind of also use this image for one of their album covers this is just one of those very very famous chamber of chills 19 pre-code horror absolutely stunning the interiors are really great too so I enjoyed looking through there one of the big flaws right here was there looked to be a sticker right here so you can kind of feel the residue of the sticker it covers up a little bit of that so what it's supposed to be is the smoke is supposed to continue right up to here and then it's supposed to be black black right there so that is a little residue of a sticker on the back of the book there's a little bit of a residue of a sticker um, might have been like a newsstand sticker or something like that newsstand mark or something but either way this one if you can believe it, was $75. And I will show you the receipt in just a moment. I'll show you guys the receipt for, for these two books. But I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about the census. So there's 107 total copies graded on the census. There are 102 universal. And the highest graded on this is a 9.6. This grade, maybe about a 3.0, 4.0. There's six of each. So there's six 3.0s six 3.5s, six 4.0s, and seven 4.5s. So this book is you know, evenly dispersed all throughout. The lowest grade is 0.5, there's two of those. 1.0, there's four of those. Just beautiful, beautiful cover, beautiful book, um, fantastic stuff, and so, so happy to have this in the collection. All right, and as promised, the owner drew up a receipt. It was for yesterday, the 24th. Black Cat Mystery number 50, $800. Chamber of Chills number 1975. dollars 
The net total was 875, paid him some in cash, paid him some in PayPal, and the balance due was 875. So that was the receipt. And then I left the shop, but I did take pictures of some of the other books. Um, actually, before we go on, let's talk about the most recent sales of that Chamber of Chills. Most recent sales were a 5.0 for almost $8,000, a 1.0 sold in April of 2021 for $4,000. Oh, geez, a 5.5 in March of 2021 sold for 13,000. Geez Louise. And in January of 21, a 5.5 sold for $7,800. So this is a very, very expensive book. In that condition, I would probably say, you know, three to $4,000. So in those two books, maybe $5,000 worth of comics right there for $875. So I left the shop and drove all the way home. And then I was, you know, telling my wife about it. And I was talking to some guys like DS online and uh, Collecto Six. And uh, I was talking to a few people about these books in the collection. And I showed him a few pictures. And I was like, oh man, I was watching Simple Man's Comics Top 50. He has two videos on the Top 50 pre code horror comics of all time. And I was like, there's one more comic in there that I need to go back for like today. So I got back home. And I, I, I called up the shop and I was like, what time do you guys close today? And what time do you guys open tomorrow? It says, We're, we close the door at six, but if I know you're coming, I can wait around a little bit longer. So I was like, I'm coming back. So I drove another hour and a half to go straight back. So it was another like round trip, three hours to go back for this last comic book. But I knew I wanted it. I knew that if, if I left it there, there was a chance that somebody could walk in and even though this box was reserved for me, that there was a chance that someone could walk in and potentially buy this book or see it and know exactly what it was. But without further ado, without further, further hesitation, this was the bag that it was in. Those ones were not in bags and boards. And this one had a price sticker of $400. And that was the price. There's no negotiations, none whatsoever in this shop. You can ask, but those are the prices. So this was a book that I, I picked out while I was looking there. And I said, wow, this is a really great cover. I was like, look at this thing. I've, I think I've seen this before. And I didn't know that it was like such a huge, huge book. So I you know, sent the pictures to a couple guys and they're like, that's a humongous book, you know, in that condition, you know, in, in this condition, it could be a $12,000 comic book. So I was like, I'm going back. I'm going back right now. And I, I went back and bought for $400 Venus number 19. This is one of Lee Polanski's, one of his favorite covers. And so this is Venus 19. It's Atlas. This is from March, excuse me, April of 1952. And it is a Bill Everett cover. And it's just, I, I picked it out of there and I was like, wow, that is a really cool looking cover. It's like, you know, that you've got the, the, you've got the good girl in the red dress blonde with, with this guy. And then the skin has come off and it's exposed that he's a skeleton. I was like, this is insane. This is so cool. $400 later, walking, walking out of the shop. My wife actually went with me this time. And so she knew what I was paying for these books. But I knew that I wanted this one. This one, by far, is in the best condition. There's no tape on the outside of the cover, but they did put reinforcements on the inside of the cover. I think probably on the back inside of the cover and in the, the staple in the centerfold. So both staples in the centerfold have a strip of tape on them, but it's complete. And that strip of tape was probably just to make sure it's older tape. Um, I'm not trying to mess with that to get it off, but this one's definitely... I know without the tape, I mean, this is easily, easily a 4.0. There was a little bit of a guy right here. As you can see, that's there. There's a little tiny piece of tape there, um, kind of like uh, ma making sure that those pieces stay on. So there is a little piece of really old tape right there. And then there's this chip right here. And I mean, even if you look at the spine, there's not much going on. It's pretty darn nice. I'm gonna get you guys some census numbers on this one. For this book, it's a little bit more rare than the other one, about half, half the census numbers for this. So there are 53 total graded on the census. There are 51 universal graded, the highest graded 
for this book is a 9.0. If I'm grading this one from a 3.0 to a 4.0, there's probably 11 3.0s, two 3.5s, and five 4.0s. It could be higher, but I'm gonna just conservatively grade it there, 3.0 to 4.0. And it's just a great, because I don't really know what tape is going to do to it. There will be a, a notation that there's tape on the interior of the book, maybe tape on cover as well. But this is uh, just one of those books that I was so happy. You know, I identified it at first, $400 price sticker. I was like, it's got to be something, but, you know, it's just a really cool cover. To find out how prominent this book is was kind of like the, the nail in the coffin for me making the decision on buying this one. So really happy with that as well. Let's go look at some of the recent sales on this one. You know, for some of these ones, golden age, it's hard to come up with the fair market value because they don't trade hands that often. And when they do, it's it could be private sales, like I've learned from DS. A lot of times, you know, private, private sales will happen that's not recorded by any of these databases, GPA or GoCollect, et cetera. But the last book that sold was in March, or excuse me, May of 2020. It was a 5.5 Comet Connect auction for $7,100. That was over a year ago. And I would assume that this book has gone up significantly since then. So a 2.0 in um, May of 2020 sold for 3,100. So this book has got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be at least that seven grand, um, if not more. And so I'm hoping it's, it's definitely more, maybe eight, nine grand i don't know but it'd have to be graded uh to solidify you know from a third party that grade but i'm i'm grading it anywhere from a 3.0 conservatively to that 4.0 once again not knowing how badly that tape is going to affect the grade but this is a beautiful book and i'm super excited about this hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this conversation hopefully you enjoyed the story about me finding that hope uh, I hopefully I was able to fit in some of that b-roll footage but if this is your first time here thank you so much for watching hit that subscription button hit that bell to be notified I've got another haul sitting right there that's been waiting but this one had to trump it because this was yesterday the 24th and I want to start posting these on Instagram uh, just to show other people what I got but these are so so great and for right now these are definitely going to stay in the collection I'm not a pre-code horror collector, but when it comes to big, big books like this, it's just too great to um, just to have it pass through that quickly. So definitely be holding on to these for quite a while and enjoying them. The interiors of these books are so cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought down below. Leave that thumbs up and I'll talk to you all in the next one. See you. Bye.